Hey everyone, Mike from Just Watch back with another episode. Everybody, thank you for tuning in today. I definitely appreciate everybody spending a few minutes watching our videos and checking out our channel. If you are a longtime subscriber, thank you very much. If you are a first time visitor, first time seeing one of our videos, thank you for stopping by. If you like the content, please do hit that subscription button below. Also remember to hit the bell notification so you get notified when we release new episodes. Speaking of new episodes, sorry, it has been a while since we last put out a video. Just been super busy with life over the last few weeks. So we're going to try and get back to a more regular schedule now that some of that stuff has been cleared off of my docket. So look for new stuff soon. I'm definitely acquiring some new watches for testing now and talking to some other people about doing some tests for them as well. So Look for new content and reviews soon on watches. For this episode, we are going to cover Seiko's top five value proposition watches. These are watches that I feel are the most bang for the buck per se from Seiko. And these are all watches that I have personally reviewed right here on the Just Watch channel. As you can see, all of these tests, I will link them below in the show notes if you want to link directly to them, or I am sure that they will pop up. Actually, if you go to my Seiko Reviews tab, you can see all of them there as well. Really quick and easy way to get there. Without further ado, let's run through my top five. These are in no particular order. Number one is the Seiko Sarb 33 and 35. These are Seiko's classic looking all-purpose watch. Very similar in style to a Rolex Datejust. Really great size at 38 millimeters. Just a really nice sporty wear with anything, do anything watch. You get 100 meter water resistance, sapphire crystal, uh, oyster style bracelet, 6R15 movement, and just like I said, just a really great watch with great wrist presence and just a really nice size and good ergonomics on the wrist as well. Truly a watch that is a strap monster that you can pretty much wear with anything. And like I said, change up some straps, you know, you can go a really nice black leather strap. You can, you know, wear it as a dress watch, especially the black dial version. And, you know, whatever you want to do with it, I think this watch can handle it. Number two is the famous Seiko Alpinist, the Sarb 17. This watch has been discontinued by Seiko Japan, as has the Seiko Sarb 33 and 35. I didn't neglect to mention that. These watches are still readily available online, however. Check out Amazon, check out some of your favorite online watch shops that sell the JDM models, and also check out eBay. There are some around that you can definitely score at a good price, if not retail, very close to it, or maybe just over it, or even sometimes on eBay, if you're buying from a trusted seller, just under retail. So the Sarb 17, same features as the Sarb 33 and 35, the cool green dial, and you're also getting the added compass inner bezel, which is operated by a crown at the four o'clock position. Really cool watch just all around. It does come on a crappy leather strap that is a, like a faux crocodile from Seiko Japan. So be aware that you're going to need to replace that strap. But most of us watch geeks and aficionados have a plethora of straps. Good news is it is a 20 millimeter size. So something that most everybody is going to have ready to change into in their collection already. So not a huge issue there at all. Really enjoyed wearing the Sarb 17. Same size as the Sarb 33 and 35 as well as about 38 millimeter. And just a really great wrist presence on the wrist. Next up is the Seiko SBDC 051 and 053. These are the famous 62 miles reissue watches that were released at Basel World in 2017. These feature just a really great, almost like a dressy dive watch style, a gorgeous blue dial on the SBDC 053, sapphire crystal with AR coating, Zeratsu polishing, just a gorgeous stainless case with just perfect ergonomics, a really nice size, it's listed as 43 millimeter, but it wears more like a 41 and a half or so. Definitely no problems as far as the size goes for most people. SBDC 051 comes on an oyster style bracelet. SBDC, SBDC 053 comes on a silicone strap. 
uh, they retail for 700 to 850 US dollars, depending on the version that you are getting, whether it's the silicone or the strap. And once again, that robust 6R15 movement and 200 meter water resistance. I really like this watch. One of the things that I did with the SPDC053 that I typically would not do is I ran it on a really nice looking dressy leather strap. Because the watch has just a really nice shine to it and just a gorgeous dial, it can almost get away with like a dress watch type of feel and it definitely worked really well, I thought, on the leather strap. So definitely feel free to experiment there if it's something that you would consider. I really enjoyed this watch. Definitely one of my Seiko favorites from the last year as my phone is letting me know I have a new email. Next is the SRP Turtle Series. These were reissued in 2015, kind of a remake of the famous 6039 and 6036 Seiko Turtle models from the late 70s and early to mid 1980s. Seiko Turtles were actually the 6039 was my first Seiko die watch, my first uh, expensive watch and also my first grail watch. Just, you know, you guys that know Seikos, I don't have to tell you, you probably all already own one. You cannot beat this watch as far as durability and functionality goes for our 35 movement, which is super robust, keeps good time. You get the date and date complication at the three o'clock and that classic dive watch styling and even better water resistance to 300 meters. These watches, you know, because it comes in that, excuse me, as I itch, itch my nose there, these watches come in that shock proof cushioned case too, which actually works really well with the 4R35's robust movement and just a watch that you can wear every day, you can beat the heck out of, and will last and last and last. Available in a whole bunch of colors and just a killer price point. I actually was looking on Amazon the other day. I saw some of these in the just the basic, I think it's the SRP777, which is the black bezel, black dial, silicone strap, starting at under $300, which to me, you cannot beat that watch for the price. Last up is the Seiko Sumo series. This watch was first introduced just a few years ago Awesome watch for the money. Once again, you're getting a 6R15 movement. You're getting a Harlex crystal. Retail price around $400. Really robust, just great classic styling. A little bit bigger, a little bit more wrist presence at 45 millimeters. So if you have a smaller wrist, something to consider. But if you like that oversized watch look on your wrist, not a problem. It wears very comfortably too, I should add, especially if you get it on a NATO strap. I really enjoyed the Sumo on a NATO strap and really liked how it looked. To me, it's a little bit similar. It definitely shares some DNA with that 6159 slash 7000, the famous Seiko dive watch that was first introduced, I believe in 1968. It was actually reintroduced as a special, I think a SLA 25, don't hold me to that reintroduced at Basel World this year in a 1500 piece limited edition that was retailing for like five, 5,500 to 6,000 US dollars, just a real expensive uh, limited edition piece. But this new Sumo or the, the Sumo available in a bunch of colors now, 6R15, Harlex crystal, 200 meter water resistant, uh, the crown at four o'clock. And as I said, just great classic styling and just, I really enjoyed wearing this watch, very easy to read. And of course that classic Seiko handset with the Seiko Luminous that just jumps right off the hand. So there's just a ton of functionality with this watch. One thing I wanted to talk about too, before you guys purchase any of these watches, especially the Seiko dive watches with the rotating bezel, make sure you're getting them from a dealer who is going to let you return it if there are any issues. As I said, over the last year or two, we've definitely noted some QC issues with Seiko watches, whether it's misaligned chapter rings, misaligned timing bezels, or a combination of all the above. And actually even some of them have had be bad bezel action. So there's actual mechanical problems underneath with the bezel. So I don't know if I had a run of bad luck because I did hear from a lot of people in the comments who said that they had no issues with their watches. So maybe I just got three bad ones in a row or something, but definitely make sure just for insurance, buy them from a dealer who's going to let you return them or who you can return them to fairly inexpensively. Authorized US dealers are always good. And check out my friend Mimo's Jewelry in Long Beach, Dot, or Long Beach, California. He is uh, memosjewelry.com. He's an authorized U.S. dealer. It has great deals where you can, you know, enter codes and stuff like that to get some significant savings on watches. I'll give you guys a link to uh, Mimo's website as well. And just note, Mimo's not giving me any kickback on this. I just like the guy. And he very early on in my channel 
gave me a shot and it helps support the channel. And I greatly appreciate that. So thank you, Mimo, if you're watching. Everybody, thank you again for tuning into this episode. I greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. Once again, please do hit that subscribe button down below. I definitely appreciate everybody. And it does help out the channel greatly. Help me secure more watches going forward, et cetera, et cetera. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning into this episode. We will be back soon with more episodes. Bye.